everyone. Welcome to RPV City Talk. I'm Liz Brown Swanson, and it's great to have here in studio for the first time in the new year, our new mayor, John Cruikshank. Thank you for being here. Happy New Year. Hey, Happy New Year to you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. This is exciting being the first time as uh, mayor and on camera and representing the city. Thanks for having me. Well, it was back in December where you were sworn in and or the reorganization happened, and there's been some weeks now. You've been busy as mayor. How is it going? <laughs> um, it's going good. So uh, I was uh, uh, made mayor in December, and then um, we had one meeting in December, and then we canceled the early January meeting. So we haven't really had that much work until this last meeting, and all of a sudden it exploded, and we had a very late meeting. So when you miss a meeting, it's just like work. Yes. If you're away for a few days, it piles up. So we, we've had our catch-up work to do in the last few days. And you're also working with uh, technically a new city council. We have some new members on board with Barbara Ferraro actually returning. She was on city council years ago. And then we have, of course, David Bradley off the Planning Commission joining all the veterans now. We've got Mayor Pro Tem Eric Alegria, yourself, and our founder, Ken Dida. So this is a new group, five of you working together. How's it going? Uh, it's good. Of course, having uh, once Mayor Ferraro back on the council, she's a good friend. Uh, clearly, she works for the school. She brings a lot of uh, great uh, ideas in regards to how we can work better with the school district. Uh, Dave Bradley, he was our chairman of our planning commission. I had worked with him briefly uh, before while I was on the planning commission, and then now we get to work again together. Great thinker, great uh, engineer scientist and uh, of course the other two uh, Ken Dida there's no one more veteran than uh, Councilman Dida and then of course our Mayor Pro Tem Eric Alegria him and I have been working together great we got elected together in 2017 uh, when our first year you know we were kind of like infants just kind of I think you were called the newbies we were called newbies for a year and that's okay and, and uh, <laughs> as mayor I got a chance to learn from really amazing mayors both Jerry Dehovic our mm -hmm. previous mayor and then two years ago Susan Brooks so uh, learn from the best. I know they were incredible what they did in their dedication to our community and we hope we'll see. I was at uh, a chamber event and already saw our former uh, RPV Mayor Susan Brooks there and of course I had to get her back on camera because she's still I'm assuming and both of them will see them active in the community. But Well right I mean you know. Susan loves Rancho Palos Verdes and, and you're not going to keep her away from, <laughs> from being involved with the city in, in whatever capacity that is. It's paradise. We're going to be talking about goals the city has and a whole bunch of the latest, greatest, and things going on, but a little bit about your vision as the mayor now in 2020. So there's so many great things that happen in our city, and so part of my vision is actually what other people's vision has been for all this time. So I would really want to make sure we preserve all the uh, incredible things that we do in our city, Whale of the Day, our big Fourth of July celebration, and all the other wonderful things that happen. Um, and so those will continue on and we'll, we'll always celebrate those. Um, some of the other things though, we, we've actually want to start enhancing some of the things we have. Uh, a lot of big discussions ahead of us. So we need to continue to get the community involved and move forward with the Ladero Linda project that uh, right now it will be going f in front of our planning commission. Portuguese Bend land flow, mm -hmm. landslide uh, has been a big issue. Uh, of course, Palos Verdes Drive South is such a huge part or connector in our city and the, the landslide that affects that. So we want to continue to look at how we can slow that down. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not ever stop it completely, but slow it down and cost effectively slow that down. And then finally, my biggest vision is that we can get some great community uh, input on our community center, because I think that's something that we can all participate in. And mm -hmm. I think uh, that's such a huge project for our city. Before we start to jump into looking at some of the big things happening at City Hall, one more thing, a little bit about you more on a personal level, just sort of how you became involved with uh, city government and politics, and if you want to share a little bit about your family. I know you have a son and your wife. And just, just to let people know a little bit more about you. Thank you, Liz. Um, so I have a very simple family. I, I <laughs> have a wife, Jennifer. Uh, we've been married since 1993. Um, so we've been together. We're best friends. Uh, I have one son, one kid. Uh, he's actually at uh, Arizona State University, and his name's Sean, and he's 18. Great kid. Um, you yeah, know, early part of his life, I'm excited for him. Um, I have lived in the South Bay my entire life, uh, which is great because I've lived in many of the cities. I, I always tell people I migrated <laughs> south from El Segundo, uh, having lived in Manhattan Beach, Redondo Beach, San Pedro. Um, my mom was actually yeah. on the school board when I was uh, growing up and in school in El Segundo. 
Um, she was on the school board for nine years and she was always involved with the community and different activities and rallies and she'd bring me to rallies and and so um, well, she trained you well we, now we've got you that's really great you. for our city and our <laughs> we benefit from that and your dedication so um, right now a lot happening at City Hall the biggest thing one of your charges is you're on the search for a new city manager what can right. you tell the community about the latest with the trying to find us a new city manager you got it um, so uh, actually, by the time people watch this, that we might have actually have already chosen someone. Okay, um, so stay tuned. <laughs> but, you know, as of airing tonight, uh, tomorrow we'll be uh, meeting at Terranea. We're going to be meeting a few, small handful of candidates. Of course, our current interim city manager, Ara Morani, is one of them. Mm -hmm. And we have some others that have been city managers or assistant city managers. We're working with a, uh, a recruit, executive recruiting firm, uh, and the lady's name is Bobby Peckham. Her company's Peckham and McKinney, and she was great. She we got about forty or fifty candidates, really good candidates. She's been able to whittle them down uh, to this four, and so tomorrow the council will be interviewing in person all of them and making a decision very shortly. Forty to fifty candidates. Who wouldn't want to work in Rancho Palos Verdes? Uh, <laughs> right. I mean, it's, it, you know, what's interesting is that I, I know that the city manager is a job with a lot of pressure. Um, and you can see it's a very competitive job because the peop the candidates that we're seeing are people that have years and decades of experience. And so it's not a, you know, just, hey, I'm doing this job here and I just want to step into a city manager. There's a lot of qualifications and steps to get to where these people have gotten to. So my hat's off to them. And you know, we mm -hmm. look forward to what our decision will be. And of course, once we are able to hire the city manager, then therefore you can fill the other vacant post in top management, like a deputy city manager and a finance director. So there's some, some big positions to yeah, fill. I mean, our city is going through a lot of changes right now. And, and uh, when your top person leaves, a lot of times their, their team under them uh, decides to leave as well. Um, we had a little bit of that, like you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. We have a finance director, we have assistant city manager, and other high-level positions to fill. Um, and we cannot do that until we have our city manager. But things are still running smoothly here, for sure. Well, I mean, as smooth that, as, smooth you, as they can you, be with you, a shift. You know what? So once again, going back to what I said about my vision, I don't want to mess things up. I think Ara, who's been our interim city manager, feels the same way. I mean, they've established a process there. Um, uh, him and I both agreed when we kind of embarked uh, in December and now in January now um, that let's not do let's not do things outside of what we don't need to be doing. Let's right. focus on what's important. So Ara's done a great job. So we're going to continue focusing on what's important. You've got a workshop coming up on February 12th. It's the public goals workshop, the goals that the city sets. Um, talk about what the goals are going forward for our city, what you'll be addressing. Right. So um, one of the things that we've decided as a council is that we would kind of say, let's start with a blank slate instead of coming in with goals from the past mm -hmm. and just continuing bringing them on like an anchor on the bottom of the ocean. We're, we're going to come forward and say, hey, what's important? I mean, the neat thing is you have three people that just won election, won re-election, mm -hmm. and they've been talking to our residents. And so they bring a lot of new and great ideas that's out there in the community. So we've said, let's look at the things we've done in the past and see if we need to build upon them. But let's come up with some new ideas and visions as well. You know, for me personally, uh, public infrastructure is a huge priority. So we want to look at the projects that I mentioned earlier. Of course, the Civic Center is a huge priority. Um, and I think we want to make sure that's done right and the Ladero Linda is done right because if those things aren't done right, then everything starts to fall apart. Mm -hmm. People have mistrust in government. And so, you know, we want to continue to have the trust of the people and get their input. And, and so that, that's really the vision that I have. All right. And of course, public safety will be obviously, I can't imagine when we up there's a top goal, always trying to have, make sure that we're working towards achieving using the most resources we can to keep everybody in the community feeling comfortable and safe. <laughs> well, that, that's right. I mean, you know, we've been fortunate to have very good public service and sheriffs. Uh, we knock on wood. We haven't had any fires this year yet. Um, you know, that that's certainly a priority as well in terms of public safety. A lot of people have been asking about, you know, evacuations and safety mm -hmm. routes and that. So I think we want to continue to really coordinate, not just with the sheriffs and fire department, but we want to be coordinating with all of our sister peninsula cities to make sure that we're all on the same page. 
Exactly. Anything else in the, what you're looking forward to addressing in that workshop that you want to share? It's obviously open to the community. Come on down at PVIC. On well, February I mean, I, I think that's it. I mean, I, I think how do we encourage people to participate? Um, it's great seeing a lot of the same people show up at the meetings, and, and they always have great ideas, and that's great. It's great having people that are engaged, but it'd be nice to bring in some people that maybe haven't participated in the past. In my first meeting, I, I made an announcement as we were talking about the Portuguese band landslide that, you know, our consultants have great ideas, but we have a lot of people in the community that have great ideas, and so we welcome all of that. Mm -hmm. Send us an email, send us a letter. Actually, email is probably more efficient. Right. Uh, it gets to the right people faster. And uh, let us know your ideas. I mean, we, we, want, we really do want to get citizen input because that helps us make decisions. And of course, the city, as I always say this every time, a fantastic website that you can go on to rpvca.gov and really get a look at what you're all working at. And you know, where goals are listed, everything, and you can really get a feel for sort of all the issues staff and councils addressing and to feel like you're tapped in because, uh, right. you know, I have friends out there and I'll say, oh, they're thinking of building a new civic center. They you know, don't even know what's going on, but no. this has been something being discussed for years. So I, I, send, people, <laughs> I send people to our website all the time. I, the, probably something that many people don't know, well, a few things. So certainly our listserv service where people can get text messages on what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, currently there's a lot of traffic activity that's unfortunately going on on Western because of a neighboring city doing construction. And, uh, you know, our residents want to know what's going on because it takes them a half hour to get home. I missed two hour. yoga classes because I decided to go the wrong way around the hill. So Yes. And Western. That was another whole, yeah, so, but anyway. Right. <laughs> so, okay, so our city tries to do its best to coordinate it, and I think we could maybe do a better job. I mean, our staff itself does a great job. If they don't know what's going on from a neighboring city, and that starts to happen, then we become reactive. And we don't want to become reactive when it comes to construction, because mm -hmm. construction, even if it's a, a week long of construction, that's a huge delay for people that are expecting to get out of their house and get somewhere quickly. We hate to hear about that. So the listserv is something that people could sign up for and, and utilize. A couple other kind of fun things, well, not fun, but you know, certainly if you see the coyotes, you can go onto the, the city website mapping. and you can map it and say, in fact, I'm, uh, this is crazy, but on my way back from uh, the city council meeting on Tuesday night, 11.27 p.m., I'm driving up Crest Road to my house and a coyote crossed in front of my path. And I actually, when I got home, I entered that into the, the right. uh, website. Um, and then also if you see uh, a sign that's fallen down or a light that's in disrepair or something that people see as a public infrastructure safety issue, guardrails damaged, they can actually take a photo of it with their phone and report that back to the city with the location and time and all that. So. Um, our city wants to be as proactive as possible, but if people know we only have 70 or less full-time employees, so we're a contract city. Mm -hmm. So we really rely on our people to be our eyes and ears yes. of anything that's going on. So the more you see and you tell us about, the better for us. And that's a good thing. Our community is super proactive, and uh, as we always say, if you see something, say something. And well, they, they, I think we can be grateful for that. That's true. We have a very engaged citizenry here. Um, let's move on to a little bit about the finances as we look forward to the new year. How are we looking? Well, um, so I have some statistics. So apparently we're in the top 20% of 471 cities evaluated in terms of fiscal health. Um, I think it's great that there's more uh, scrutiny going on uh, statewide in regards to where cities are financially because there are so many hot spots in terms of a budget that can really become a problem. Pensions are of course one of them. And so that's kind of a valuable indicator for us but for me personally being an engineer and not a finance person but being a resident that pays taxes right. Um, you know, I like to solve problems, but I also don't like to get in the way. And our city budget's actually uh, been set up to where we have a certain amount of reserves and we keep a certain amount. So we have a good, healthy reserves. And our earlier councils set all that up. So for me, I, I think that the way they set all that stuff up is great. Uh, we continue to monitor that and make sure that it works for our city. Um, we have some big ticket items coming up potentially, uh, which will potentially affect that. Um, we have a great finance advisory committee that we'll be leaning on quite a bit for advice and getting community input on our finances. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty stable. Uh, also, some of the things we've done 
We've reduced utility fees. Uh, last year, we actually got rid of the home-based business uh, uh, business tax. Yes. So, not only are we staying financially healthy, but we're also able to uh, cut taxes. And um, also, our one of the things our pre previous mayor, Mayor Dehovic, had asked, and Susan Brooks as well had asked. They had said, "Hey, how can we reduce the amount of uh, government uh, expenditures?" And over the last year, they were able to reduce by a couple million that was dollars. Amazing. So, um, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's just a matter of asking your staff to do something and let them, let them figure out how to do the, because they understand it. They're there all the time. And so instead of having the city council mandate, hey, here's what you should do, we just asked them, can you reduce the amount of expenditures? And they did. All right. As, if you look at the big pictures, we're just starting the new year. Are you personally, as a resident, as a councilman, uh, mayor, uh, are you, are you, are you, how would you judge sort of the quality of life right now in the city? Are you happy with where we're at? I think a few weeks ago I might have given you a different answer. Uh, I, I would have been a little more sunshine and roses. I, I actually am not happy what about What happened over two weeks? <laughs> well, this, all this construction activity okay. and this traffic, I've, we've gotten a lot of complaints about that, and that really makes me unhappy. Uh, I, th I don't think that's fair to our residents to just put that on them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, new, new semester starts for school, people are getting back to work after the holidays, and now they're hit with a bunch of that. So I personally am not happy about that, uh, and I, I don't blame our staff right. at all because our staff literally got blindsided themselves because it's activity that occurs from other cities. But that doesn't mean we blame other people. What we can figure out to do is how do we coordinate better? How do we be more proactive and maybe have a more of a coordinating committee with the other cities, our neighboring cities, because we need to do a better job of that. Mm -hmm. I know when you first ran for council, I was looking at um, some of the things, your goals, and you wanted to see how to make you know City Hall more efficient, more user-friendly, um, and um, do you feel like that's going on right now? Do you think in terms of the, the residents and connecting at City Hall that, that that's going well? I think it's more user-friendly. I think there's still work that always can be done. Mm -hmm. um, I really want to figure out how to minimize people having to get in their car and go do things. Um, I've talked to our staff and I've talked to the people at the South Bay City's uh, Council of Government, which kind of oversees our regional transportation planning and housing. And how, how do we get people to access uh, city services or government services without having to go somewhere to go do that? We have all the technology to do these things. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, you know, the madness of us driving to work at 8 a.m. and coming home at 5 p.m. and all of us in all of LA County or all of California does that every day. And then we all complain about the traffic, but w to me, uh, you know, there's things that we can do, and I, govern, I'm not a government dictate to people. I right. think it's may, maybe more, here's some good ideas and getting the information out to people so they can make good decisions for themselves. But I'm always encouraging people to, you know, how, how do we, how do we uh, make it so that we don't have to get in the car all the time? Right. And, and because I think it improves our quality of life, I really mm -hmm. do. So we're going to look at some of the um, issues and items that came up at your last city council meeting. Mm -hmm. We tend to, in city talk, try to address sort of key issues and edit and topics that you've had to vote on. So it started off with a public hearing with about with Green Hills. Right. So why don't you uh, share with the residents like what was what would that Green Hills um, hearing was about? Sure. So uh, Green Hills, of course, is one of our uh, businesses that has been in our city for, actually they've been in the area before our city was even founded. Right. And they're located on Western Avenue in the uh, northeast portion of our city. And they have a large piece of property, and in that property, of course, it's a cemetery. Uh, but for them to continue their operations, they have people that are visiting, they have a lot of events, they have construction activity. So they have a lot of the things that they need to get permits for. And so many years ago, they received a, a master conditional use permit mm -hmm. so that they can do all these activities without having to come back all the time for one-off projects. Right. And it's an efficient way of doing things. And it, it gives them all the guidelines of how they're supposed to perform their work and act. And so because the city council was the final decider of that document, they are now responsible for an annual review. And so we just conducted a public hearing for their annual review. And so those of you that have been watching council mm -hmm. meetings, they know that the Vista Verde residents are next door to the uh, Green Hills operation. They do have a mausoleum that was mistakenly uh, built eight feet away from their property the versus Terrace. 80 feet away. 
and it's a blunder that everyone wishes didn't happen. Right. So, uh, but not, it's there. Well, right, and not not able to go back in time, it's something that we now need to make sure that we don't further exacerbate mm -hmm. what's going on. And even though they live in the city of Lamita, they're still our neighbors. And so we need to treat them with respect. The Green Hill staff, I believe, and, and the council even acknowledged, has done a very good job of maintaining the park. And, and you know, they, they get visitors. They get a lot of visitors, right. as we know. And so it's a very difficult thing potentially to control. Um, and so for, for us, we, we looked at all that, and really the complaints were around the mausoleum that's right, right near the, the Vista Verde. I think that was, I mean, aren't, the, aren't there complaints and incidents at least going down? That's what Big we're, time. That's good. Yeah, and, that, and then we acknowledge that. The, the complaints have gone down, and they even talked about the number of complaints going down, and they keep tightening up what they do there. And so we basically said, okay, you're good for this year. We are allowing them to put up a, a temporary sign uh, underneath their main sign, so direct people on hours for different events. Mm -hmm. but, but other than that, we kind of recommended, hey, continue to do what you can for the, the local residents to make it better. Okay, so that was on there. Then we're gonna move on. The next item that came up at the council meeting was um, you were appointing members to the Planning Commission the, and the other committees in the community. So right. talk about that whole process, the election process, and there was, what, 17 volunteer candidates that put their name out there that want to serve the community on different committees and commissions. So not an easy job for all of you that are trying to pick and choose. No. Like you said, we had 17 uh, great candidates uh, for uh, two committees and one commission. The Planning Commission had three openings. The uh, Civic Center Committee had five and then the finance committee had two. And so we had to go through 17 applicants. Always a difficult task. It took us two nights to interview the applicants, and all of them are great, mm -hmm. like I said. And um, we went ahead and voted, and out in the public. So, and those committees and commissions help the council and staff quite a bit. You know, whether it's the Civic Center Advisory Committee, they're looking into the possibility and the need and all of that, and finance, like you were just referencing with the budget. Yep. And so, um, it's one of our newer committees, the Civic Center uh, Committee. Uh, I truly believe that's our most important committee at this point because we have just gotten through programming and there's so many more things to do with that. And I think we all feel that we need much more community engagement. And so the seven members that are now on that committee, our hope is, is that they can get as much community involvement and engagement and feedback because there's nothing more important in our city than our civic center. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to that meeting. Um, you, as a council, there was a consent calendar item opposing the amended Senate Bill 50. So if someone reading that agenda, they're saying, what is Senate Bill 50? Uh, Senate Bill so 50. can you explain to the residents what's going on, the council's position on Senate Bill 50? You got it. So Senator Weiner, uh, he actually represents San Francisco area, uh, created Senate Bill 50, um, and his so his goal basically is to allow for basically unfettered housing around transit and around jobs. Mm -hmm. And so the theory is that, you know, people are going to their jobs and we need to make sure that if there's a bus line that takes them to those jobs, let's get housing around that bus line. Or if there's a transit center, let's get the housing around that transit center. And so our city actually does have uh, what they probably would consider a transit rich along Western because of the bus lines. Uh, possibly PV Drive South where we have the bus lines. I don't know if Hawthorne is, probably not. Um, so on the Western Avenue corridor where there that is, we don't really have job rich area but more of the transit rich. Mm -hmm. So what Wieners built, what they said was that we gave the cities a chance to create housing and you failed so we're just going to we're going to tell you what to do now, mm -hmm. and you're not going to have any more decisions. And so um, we've pushed back on that, and what it would mean potentially is you're talking about four-story apartments without permit processing uh, or being stopped all along Western uh, around these bus stops that are within, for the buses, within a quarter mile radius. So for people who want to continue to follow along on this issue, what's the best way to kind of see what happens next? Um, we put out a weekly a newsletter, and uh, we've been actually, every week that's been talked about. Okay. So I would say to make sure you're getting the city uh, newsletter, uh, okay. the weekly uh, report, that's the one they want to do. 
All right. So now on the subject of housing, there's also a lot of talk that happens at the council and the community about what's called RENA, which yes. is, stands for Regional Housing Needs Assessment. Yes. And it relates to um, just having, keep telling the state and having communities say, well, you need this much more housing, not just affordable, but all types of housing. So, right? So what's happening with that? Well, How does um, that? Right. So <laughs> uh, the governor believes we need a lot more housing in the state. And um, so to do that, they've uh, basically said that Southern California needs 1.3, maybe it's even more than that, 1.3 million homes. Uh, it was an interesting dynamic because uh, our, our agency, this uh, was a South uh, Southern California Association of Government, SCAG, right. they're the ones that represent us in this region. And they, they basically are the ones that will approve the number of votes and, and come up with the, approve the numbers that come to us. SCAG will. Yes, SCAG will. And so during the, so at one point we only had, I think it was 93 uh, housing units that we were going to be responsible for. And even though that sounded bad, we kind of started getting arms around and saying, okay, well, let's figure out how to make that work. And then they had another round of, of reassessing who needs what. Apparently the Inland Empire and the city of Los Angeles thought it would be a good idea to move all the housing to the South Bay into the near the beach and coastal community because that's where all the jobs are. Mm -hmm. Even though you could create jobs in the Inland Empire, but whatever. You know, so here, here, but the requirement over Right, so the they coast. moved the, away from them and to us. And so we went from 93 to 619 now. So and we're... That's our new number, and SCAG just voted to approve those numbers. So, so what do we do then as a city? Well, uh, so what do we do? So, you know, we can write letters all, all day long, uh, and, and that's great, but that's probably not going to do anything. Um, we're going to need to probably figure out how to band together with all of the the mm -hmm. whole South Bay and everyone that's getting affected and, and fight this. And all this is legally. another example of losing, losing local control and saying, what are your needs for housing? Well, totally. I mean, it's... It's ludicrous to think a city that started with 42,000 has not grown that much over the last right. 46 but years. we need 600 more houses. Now we need 600 plus more housing. And we none of the jobs are really here. I mean, we have some good businesses here, but in terms of volume of businesses, we're very low compared to other cities. And now we're being asked to do this huge number. Mm -hmm. And it's just not possible. So um, we, we've got our work ahead. Got it. Um, so we actually only have a few more minutes here, and I have a lot more things to talk to, talk with you about. So uh, I think one thing I want to um, bring up now, because every mayor comes and they have sort of their signature to it, and you are doing a wonderful start with uh, recognizing a hero in the community, an entrepreneur. Thank you. Um, bring that up with us, what you were doing. I know we just had a wonderful uh, inventor, Derek Gable. Who's Derek Gable. Unreal. You know, volunteer of the year at the chamber. I just saw him get honored, and you selected him to give him an honor at the council meeting. We, we did. Um, so last year we were honoring war heroes. This year we want to uh, honor people that are heroes as entrepreneurs and inventors and business people um, because uh, that's really our city is built full of people that are so inventive and and Mr. Gable is a perfect example of that with all his toy patents and, and all that he's done. He's, a, he's, he's one and also at that I was to say your last council meeting you honored him you had the honor of being with the mayor from Sakura Japan if you want to quickly share what happened with that. Uh, that, that was fun. exciting so um, the mayor of Sakura was here and he um, was here because they actually send students to Maryless Intermediate School to come and, and learn about. They spend a few weeks and learn about. They stay with residents mm -hmm. and then they go back. And so um, what's interesting is, is that uh, uh, Councilwoman Ferraro made a recommendation that we consider them as a potential sister city. Mm -hmm. And our city doesn't have a sister city, I, which wow. is unbelievable. So there you go. That yeah. would be that would be nice. We have to wrap it up. Anything you want to add? Any special mayor's announcements? I know we're jumped around a little bit, but I really appreciate you taking the time to come in here. And no, I appreciate bring the that. community up to speed. No, this is my first one. It's <laughs> going to be a great year for our city, and I say that if you haven't been engaged with our city, we'd love to have you to be engaged. Um, we get our energy and our uh, our ideas from the community. All right. Well, we'll see you at the next council meeting. And I know you're busy running around the hill at all kinds of things. So thank you for serving as our mayor. That's going to do it for this edition of RPV City Talk. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.